The highly anticipated Watchmen series is finally here, and with it, a ton of Easter eggs, as well as loaded references to the comic book that preceded it. This is a Damon Lindelof joint after all, so would you expect anything less? Hi, I'm Grant Davis from Who Pods the Watchmen, a weekly companion podcast for the HBO Watchmen television series. We're doing a series of video deep dives, dissecting particular elements of the TV show with the release of the episodes. But just a friendly reminder to you guys, please recognize that there are going to be spoilers throughout this whole thing. So go watch the episode. This video is going to be operating on the assumption that you have already read the comic book or are at least somewhat familiar with what's going on there. So if you haven't read it, I do highly recommend it. It's a great read. And you can also tune in to earlier episodes of our podcast if you want to go issue by issue dissecting it along with us. In this particular video, we're going to be talking about Will Reeves, played by Louis Gossett Jr. We're going to dive into his backstory as we see him as a young boy watching a movie in the theater with Bass Reeves. Talk about a little bit of that back history, as well as the potential that he might be one of our masked heroes. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. The premiere opens in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921, where a small boy is sitting in a theater watching a movie on the screen that features a U.S. Marshal named Bass Reeves. Bass Reeves was actually a real-life historical figure, the first black deputy U.S. Marshal west of the Mississippi. He was born into slavery and somehow gained his freedom during the Civil War and went on to become a notable marshal, claiming credit for making over 3,000 arrests and actually only killing 14 people, which is impressive because he had a license to kill. He was rumored to be the inspiration for the Lone Ranger, and he actually wore costumes and disguises in order to get his perp. He was like one of the first superheroes. He even became one of the very first police officers of Muskogee, Oklahoma, soon after he gained statehood in 1907. Also notable, he had an epic mustache. Check out that beauty, like a walrus. He died in 1910 of nephritis, which was also known as Bright's disease. This is notable only in so much as you remember those signs being held up that say the future is bright? His future was bright in that case, Bright's disease. So now that we've covered a little bit about Bass Reeves, let's jump back to the little boy in the theater, Will Reeves, who was watching the movie. We watch as this young boy goes through a tragedy. He's pulled away from his home in Tulsa, Oklahoma. His parents take him, put him on a car, and they ship him out of the city as these horrific riots are going on, this massacre that goes on in Tulsa in 1921. And one thing in particular I want to note is the similarities between the origin story of some of our most famous superheroes, Batman and Superman, and this story of Will Reeves. Most of you will recall, with Batman, his story takes place as a young boy watching a movie of one of his heroes in the theater, Zorro, before he and his parents leave the theater, and they're accosted by a mugger who holds them up in the alleyway and murders them in front of Bruce Wayne. He later becomes Batman, and he draws his inspiration for his costume from that of Zorro from the movie that he was watching. Similarly, you can see that little Will Reeves sitting in that movie theater is definitely inspired by the heroism of Bass Reeves in the movie, who, who notably is wearing a hooded cloak. And that might be a little bit of an indicator of what costume Will Reeves might don when he later adopts a superhero persona. And that's not the only interesting superhero parallel going on here, because we also have his parents rush him into a room where they're loading him up into a crate, a vessel of sorts, that they're going to ship him away from the city. And really quickly before they ship him off, his father scribbles a note and tucks it in his pocket. This is very similar to what happens with the Superman character, Cal el from Krypton. His parents have realized that the planet is being destroyed, and his father scribbles a note they tuck him into a spaceship and send him off to Earth, their last bastion of hope. And just like Superman, he also crashes into a field in the rural Midwest. I would also like to point out really quickly, you see a drop of blood going across his forehead from the top right dripping down toward his eye. And that's notable, that is a trademark iconic imagery that carried through from the comic with the superhero button pin that the comedian wears. We also see that drip of blood fall upon the sheriff pin, that star that's hanging below Chief Judd Crawford at the very end. And maybe that drop of blood on top of the symbol, either the head or on the star, is a way of indicating that these people are leading double lives, that they have some sort of superhero alter ego. 
Let's flash forward to the modern day, and now we meet an older gentleman in a wheelchair, played by Louis Gossett Jr. You can tell this is already the same kid that we saw in the very beginning intro. He's got the same trademark mole on his face. And later, they pretty heavy-handedly show him holding the exact same note from when he was a kid. Maybe it was a bit much, but for some people, you just need the shorthand to say, it's the same person. It is also notable that that note somehow lasted 100 years. I think that note has a superpower. Will Reeves, Louis Gossett Jr., is seen in his wheelchair wearing red and purple. This leads me to believe that his character is signifying to us that he might be the Hooded Justice, one of the very first superheroes that started the era of superheroes in the world of Watchmen. The first appearance of the Hooded Justice is charted to the late 1930s, and that would be a perfect amount of time for Will Reeves to have grown up to his early 20s and, you know, don the costume of a superhero based upon what he saw in the Bass Reeves movie. Also, one of the earliest examples of nerdy cosplay. Hooded Justice was one of the original Minutemen, one of the precursors to our more contemporary protagonists, the heroes of the 80s Watchmen comic. You may actually recognize the Hooded Justice if you've been watching the Watchmen trailers that came out in advance of the first episode. He was in that American Hero story where he's jumping through the window to stop a supermarket robbery. Not much is actually known about the Hooded Justice character. His identity is not actually revealed in the comic book, although there are theories that he was a German strongman named Rolf M Mueller. Mueller. But that rumor could never actually be substantiated. Could Will Reeves be the true Hooded Justice? Wearing the mask that reminded him of that old Bass Reeves movie? You would have to admit that the noose around his neck would take on a much heavier connotation in this regard. Will Reeves actually asks Angela at one point if he looks like he could lift 200 pounds. A seemingly innocuous, if not bizarre, question at first. But later we see him by a chief's body. Chief is hanging from the tree, and we have to ask ourselves a question. Would he be able to do that? Maybe if he was actually hiding his identity as Hooded Justice, and he actually was a lot stronger than he appears. But we're going to explore a little bit more of the identity of Chief Judd in a bit and why he might have even had motivation to do such a thing. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to watch this video. We would love to hear your theories about what is going on with this character. Please write them in the comments below and also go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. You can listen to more of us at whopodsthewatchman.com. There you can go and subscribe to our podcast and hear us talk more about every single episode and dissect all of this craziness because we are obsessed. We're obsessed. We're obsessed.